The movie begins with Matt, our main character, organizing a celebration in Singapore where he plans to propose to his girlfriend Jessie. The atmosphere is lively and joyful as Matt sets the stage for his marriage proposal. However, the event takes a tragic turn when a traitor, present at the party with malicious intent, reveals explosives with the aim of causing mass destruction. Matt spots the traitor and attempts to avert disaster, but despite his efforts, the bomb detonates, resulting in a catastrophic explosion that leaves everyone dead, including Matt, who submits to his injuries amidst the chaos. In a surreal twist, Matt regains consciousness to find himself in an unfamiliar chamber. His vision blurred, he briefly sees a woman removing a bracelet from his wrist before losing consciousness again. When he wakes up next, he is startled to find himself in the middle of a river. Confused and disoriented, he swims to shore, trying to make sense of his bizarre bizarre surroundings. On the riverbank, he encounters several individuals from the party, as well as others he has never met before. Among them are Deborah and her boyfriend Antonio. However, Jesse is nowhere to be found, deepening Matt's sense of loss and bewilderment. Teaming up with Daniel, a historian, Matt leaves Deborah and Antonio behind and begins to explore this strange new world. As they journey together, they come across a stack of food. Daniel uses his bracelet, similar to the one Matt Matt had before his encounter with the mysterious woman to access one of the lunchboxes. This triggers Matt's memory of having a bracelet on his wrist, hinting at a connection between the bracelet and the peculiar circumstances they find themselves in. The plot thickens as Matt and his companions encounter a girl named Tomo, who is bewildered and questioning whether she is dead. Matt responds to her queries, stating that no one truly knows the answer to her question. He deduces that Tomo is from from Japan, specifically from a dynasty that existed approximately 800 years ago. This revelation astonishes the historian, Daniel, who becomes deeply intrigued by Tomo's presence and background. The group is further surprised when they learn that Tomo can speak English fluently, despite never having learned it. She explains that she acquired the language through her dreams, a phenomenon that adds to the mysterious nature of their situation. As Matt explores the area, he encounters a weak girl from whom food has been taken. He intervenes to return the stolen food to her. Suddenly, Matt overhears someone calling out the name Jessica, which prompts him to rush towards the source. He meets a man named Richard and urgently inquires about Jessica, hoping for information about her whereabouts. However, Richard is evasive and eventually resorts to physical aggression, punching Matt in the face and sternly advising him to forget about Jessica before walking away. The narrative takes a darker turn as Matt experiences disturbing nightmares filled with vivid images of corpses. Upon awakening from these nightmares, he finds himself next to a man who appears non-human. Startled and apprehensive, Matt questions the man about his identity. Instead of answering directly, the man cryptically warns Matt against obeying the commands of the upper bodies. This cryptic warning further intensifies the sense of mystery and danger that permeates the story as Matt and the others grapple with the realities of their surreal and perplexing environment. Matt is persistent in his questioning to understand the identity of the strange man he encountered. However, his inquiry is abruptly interrupted when he is struck by a mysterious force. At this moment, the woman he first saw upon reviving from death reappears. She advises Matt to keep his distance from Richard and to disregard his men's orders, labeling them as traitors. This warning contrasts sharply with the message given by the man she has just eliminated. Shortly after delivering this caution, the woman vanishes once again. In the midst of these bewildering events, Tomo finds Matt alone in the woods. Curious, she asks if he has seen anything unusual, but he replies that he hasn't. Their conversation shifts to Tomo's past, where she shares her story of becoming a nun due to her love for a man, and Matt talks about his work as a TV reporter. During their discussion, Matt notices the girl responsible for the explosion at the party. She is hiding behind a stone, and in a surge of anger and grief, he confronts her expressing the immense loss her actions have caused. Tomo intervenes to calm Matt down and approaches the girl to understand her motives, gently tending to her wounds. The girl reveals that she was promised 
paradise as a reward for carrying out the bombing, but now realizes that it was all a lie, leaving her disillusioned and disinterested in everything. The situation takes a dire turn when Richard's soldiers arrive, unexpectedly surrounding Matt, Tomo, and everyone else present. They are swiftly overpowered and forced to surrender, becoming captives and slaves to Richard's forces. This development adds another layer of complexity to the already intricate and mysterious world of the movie. The plot continues with the character Antonio tragically killed by soldiers during a conquest. Some survivors, now soldiers themselves, wear uniforms as a sign of their new allegiance. Amidst this turmoil, Matt urges his friends to devise an escape plan. He mentions the arrival of a ship and proposes that they seize the opportunity to board it and flee their current situation. However, their plan is disrupted when the soldiers capture Matt, leaving his team without their leader and in a vulnerable position. Meanwhile, Matt finds himself imprisoned alongside Simon, his old friend and former cameraman. Their reunion brings a moment of joy amidst the dire circumstances. Eager for information, Matt bombards Simon with questions. Simon reveals that six years have passed since the Singapore bombing incident, a revelation that shocks Matt. When asked about Jessie, Simon recounts that the last time he saw her was during a pursuit by Richard. He confesses that he himself was killed by Richard during that chase and is unaware of what happened to Jesse afterward. As Matt's friends tirelessly work to execute their escape plan, their efforts are frustrated when Richard discovers their intentions. The group is captured and taken into custody. Richard, intrigued by Matt's lack of a bracelet, a symbol of control in this world, decides not to kill him. Richard speculates that Matt might possess valuable knowledge about the caregivers, the mysterious entities overseeing this strange world. Despite some calls for Matt's immediate execution, Richard decides to keep him alive, but isolated, turning him into a solitary prisoner. Soon, Matt grapples with the traumatic memories of his past as a war zone reporter, leading to numerous sleepless nights and restless days. Amidst this turmoil, the extraordinary girl who has appeared to Matt before re-emerges with a crucial message. She instructs him to find Jesse and hints that a man named Sam will be waiting for him at the river. Urging Matt to meet Sam, she then vanishes, leaving Matt to ponder her words. Matt mutters Sam's name, catching the attention of the prison keeper, who forcefully drags him out of his cell, demanding to know how Matt is familiar with Sam. In a sudden turn of events, a little girl who Matt had tragically killed in a past car accident intervenes, attacking the soldier and urging Matt to flee. Pursued by Pizarro's soldiers and Richard, Matt makes a desperate dash towards the river. Upon reaching the shore, he is rescued by Sam's people, who help him aboard their boat, allowing him to escape his pursuers. While aboard Sam's boat, the female caregiver reappears to Matt, expressing her desire for Richard to be killed. Matt firmly asserts his unwillingness to follow orders or to commit murder, prompting the caregiver to vanish in a burst of blinding light, leaving Matt momentarily disoriented. A battle soon erupts as the slaves under Pizarro's rule rise up in rebellion. Tomo, showcasing her remarkable sword fighting skills, leads the charge against Richard's soldiers alongside others. Richard, noticing Sam's boat approaching on the river, signals his troops to prepare for battle. The conflict intensifies, with the momentum gradually shifting in favor of the slaves. They manage to decimate the majority of Richard's army, gaining ground through sheer determination and effort. Matt and Sam join the fight, contributing significantly to the victory over the enemy soldiers. However, in the aftermath of the battle, Richard is nowhere to be found, having successfully evaded capture. Soon after, a tense moment unfolds as Sam, Matt, and their companions sail on a boat. Suddenly, they encounter Richard, holding a hostage from the opposing side. In a shocking turn of events, Richard shoots Sam once, and Matt three times, tauntingly revealing that Jesse, Matt's love interest, has fallen for another man in Riverworld. Leaving them stranded in the middle of the river, Richard departs with Simon, Tomo, and the rest of the crew. Sam's wife, seeking to save herself, pleads for forgiveness and remains on the boat, while two of Sam's crew members hide under a table during the confrontation. Following the attack, Simon and Tomo are distraught, unable to find Matt in or around the river. Tomo suggests that their only option to survive and move forward is to ally themselves with Richard and his team. This proposal reflects their desperation and the complexity of the situation. Meanwhile, the caregivers, whom Richard refers to as demons, and opposes in his quest to end the cycle of resurrection 
resurrection intervene to aid Matt. They lay him on a special engine designed to help him recall everything, including the painful revelation of Jesse's infidelity with Richard in Riverworld. Confronted with this harsh reality, Matt struggles to accept that Jesse, once his beloved, had a relationship with Richard, his enemy. After this revelation, the caregivers leave Matt on the engine, informing him that he will be free as long as Richard continues with his plan to destroy Riverworld. Subsequently, the female caregiver reaches out to Tomo, instructing her to rescue Matt. This leads to a setup where Matt finally confronts Jesse, who is now a prisoner. Jesse reluctantly confirms the caregiver's claims, explaining her loneliness in Riverworld and how Richard came to her aid. She seeks forgiveness from Matt, who tries to move past their history, focusing on their present reunion. However, their reconciliation is short-lived, as Jesse is suddenly taken away by an unknown entity, leaving Matt behind as she cries out in distress. In the final moments of the story, the characters mobilize to stop Richard's plans. Tomo, following instructions from the female caregiver, joins forces with Matt for a critical mission to locate and stop Richard. Throughout their journey, they encounter various challenges, which they face together, showcasing their resilience and determination. Richard and his followers find themselves betrayed by the captives they had taken from Sam's group. These captives attempt to seize control of the power source inside Richard's boat. However, Richard discovers their escape attempt and confronts them, forcing them to continue their journey towards a new and unknown territory. As Matt and Tomo grapple with the daunting task of reaching Richard's boat, which is miles away, Matt grows increasingly frustrated. At this critical point, the caregiver intervenes, providing them with Richard's location and showing them an air-floating plane-like vehicle. This discovery lifts their spirits as it presents a solution to one of their major challenges. They introduce themselves to the plane's owners and pilot, securing their passage on the vehicle. Simultaneously, Sam and his team struggle to climb a mountain, exhausted and lacking food and water. As they contemplate retreating, they spot the flying vehicle above them, reigniting their hope. They manage to board the plane, leaving the land behind to pursue Richard's boat from the air. Upon locating Richard's boat, the group prepares to confront him. However, Richard, caught off guard by their unexpected arrival, scrambles to gather essential items. On board, Sam discovers several of Richard's men dead around a table, poisoned by snacks provided by his wife, who proudly confesses her deed. In a dramatic turn, the aircraft carrying the group suddenly catches fire and explodes in the sky, a sight witnessed by those on Richard's boat. Seizing the opportunity amidst the chaos, Richard and his remaining followers escape on a small boat. Alerted by Tomo, the group on the ground quickly shifts their focus from the aircraft's demise to pursuing Richard. The movie leads to a high-stakes chase as the characters race to catch up with Richard, determined to put an end to his destructive actions and restore order in the mysterious world of Riverworld. In the climax of the plot, the pursuit of Richard leads Matt and his companions to a cave. In the midst of this chase, Tomo is tragically struck by one of Richard's men, causing her to collapse. Matt, distraught, cradles her in his arms as she dies of her injuries. Amidst the turmoil, Matt encounters an illuminating object, which triggers Richard to emerge and engage him in fierce combat. The two engage in a prolonged and intense fight, which ends in Matt stabbing Richard. At this critical moment, Jesse unexpectedly appears at the cave's entrance, screaming in a desperate attempt to stop Matt from killing Richard. Matt heartbroken and confused by Jesse's actions, confronts her. He questions why she would aid Richard in his destructive mission, potentially dooming the only world they have left. Before Matt can process the situation fully, Richard regains consciousness and activates a device that dramatically alters their reality. Suddenly, an aircraft jet starts, and Richard, seizing the opportunity, quickly boards the jet with Jesse, leaving Matt and Tomo behind. The world around them turns white, and when the blinding light fades. Matt and Tomo find themselves back at the river shore. In a surprising turn of events, they see Sam approaching in a boat. They board the boat, reuniting with their friends. The caregiver then appears to Matt, informing him that his actions have ultimately saved Riverworld. Despite his uncertainty about his role, Matt's choices have had a profound impact. In a final attempt to find closure, Matt asks the caregiver about Jesse's whereabouts, but she admits she doesn't know. Resigned, yet hopeful, Matt rejoins 
joins his companions, ready to embark on a new chapter in their extraordinary afterlife. In the movie's final scene, the characters are shown in the cold room of their resurrection chamber, suggesting a continuous cycle of life and rebirth in Riverworld. The movie concludes on this ambiguous note, leaving us to ponder the characters' fates and the mysterious nature of Riverworld itself.